All right. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Poonam Parhar. I'm working in uh, JVM Sustaining Engineering team at Oracle. A gentleman here asked, uh, you know, what is JVM Sustaining Engineer? It's an interesting title. Interesting title. So uh, JVM Sustaining Engineering is a group in Oracle um, where we work really hard um, on resolving customer escalated problems against hotspot JVM. Um, so here's a little bit about me. Um, I'm a co-author of the book, Java Performance Companion. I have been speaking at uh, Java One for a couple of years, and I'm a Java One rock star. I've been speaking at other Java conferences uh, as well. Uh, I maintain a blog here at this uh, link, and I published a, a number of articles on uh, how to troubleshoot problems uh, in Hotspot JVM. So all right, uh, how many of you have seen this out of memory error exception? Everybody, okay. <laughs> so, so you are in the right room. Uh, so whenever we see this exception, you know, we are kind of scared, oh, this means that there is some sort of memory related issue with my application and I'll have to spend days and nights um, figuring out what's wrong with my application, you know, why this exception is occurring. So this is kind of a symptom that uh, there is something related to memory, which is, you know, uh, which, is, which is not right with the application. So not just out of memory uh, error exception, there are other symptoms uh, uh, such as unexpected memory growth uh, in our application or poor application performance which uh, kind of indicate that uh, our application is struggling with memory issues and uh, we should be investigating that. Uh, and oftentimes, these symptoms are connected to GC activities in Java applications. For, um, and those uh, you know, can be confirmed by looking at GC logs or monitoring uh, our applications and confirming that there are, are there long GC pauses? Are there excessive GCs in my application, which could be caused due to misconfiguration of memory pools, excessive use of finalizers, explicit GC invocations, or even a memory leak in the application. So in this session, our goal is to understand how we can go about from symptoms or behavior, uh, those specific behaviors in our application, to uh, the bottom box, uh, what is causing those symptoms in our application. This is what the agenda looks like. Um, we'll be talking about memory issues related to Java, He, permanent generation, meta space, code cache, native memory, and what, uh, you know, what is causing those issues and how do we troubleshoot them. We'll also take a look at uh, out of memory related issues due to finalization. So Java heap memory issues. Um, so when we, when we look at those symptoms, uh, you know, just um, ra uh, rather than just jumping at the conclusion that, oh, my application is having a memory leak because I see those symptoms, there is unexpected memory growth, there is poor, perf poor performance of the application, or my application is failing with out of memory error. Before doing that, before jumping at the conclusion that there is a memory leak, we first should confirm whether there is a memory leak. We should monitor our Java heap usage over time. If there are full GCs occurring uh, during the runtime of our application, are those full GCs able to claim, reclaim space in the old generation of, uh, of the Java heap? If they are not, then probably it's just a configuration issue. Our Java heap size may not be appropriately configured. It might be sized too small. So the first step is increase the heap size, test the application again, and if there is still a uh, conti uh, continuous memory growth uh, in the application, in our processes, uh, then probably, uh, you know, there is a likelihood that uh, there is a memory leak in the application. So um, we can use various tools to monitor heap usage of our, of our application. For example, in this case, this is JConsole connected to a live application and monitoring uh, the uh, heap usage. In this case, it is clear that permanent generation occupancy is growing over time. 
uh, if it is not possible to uh, do live monitoring of the application, we can collect GC logs and we can analyze those, those GC logs to see uh, what is the heap usage of our application? You know, um, uh, is is it is it um, uh, sized appropriately? Is it uh, good enough? Is it big enough to hold uh, the live data set of our application? Uh, for example, in this case, from the GC log, uh, you can see that even after full GCs, the heap usage is continuously growing. So the option we should be using uh, to appropriately size our uh, Java heap is minus XMX, uh, which sets the maximum heap size um, for our Java heap. Uh, and we recommend setting this value equal to the value of minus XMS, which sets the initial value of uh, Java heap. So, um, so there are three steps of troubleshooting any problem. Um, you know, uh, understand that what the problem is. For example, in this case, we are looking at out of memory or memory related issues to Java heap. Second step is to get insights into the problem, to collect diagnostic data uh, from the system. And the third step is to analyze that data to understand why the problem is occurring and uh, find the solution. So uh, let's go ahead with the uh, step of collecting diagnostic data, what diagnostic data we should be collecting to, um, to, to troubleshoot Java heap related memory problems. Uh, so for, for, for Java heap related memory issues, we should be uh, collecting GC logs, heap dumps, heap histograms. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, in detail, one by one, how uh, we, we, which tools we can use to collect this data and how this, uh, uh, each, each, each diagnostic data helps us in troubleshooting. Uh, GC logs, they are very helpful in determining the heap requirements. Uh, they tell us uh, what is the, you know, the appropriate size of, a, of, of Java heap. Uh, they uh, tell us if there are excessive GCs or if there are long GC pauses in application execution. Uh, these are the GC logging options that can be used to collect GC logs. Uh, for Java 9, uh, we can we, we use my, uh, new uh, JVM option minus X log GC to collect GC logs, and uh, uh, you know these these the first two lines tell us the GC log options to be used with G1 and non-G1 collectors. And for prior Java versions, we can use print GC details, print GC timestamps, um, date stamps, and minus X log GC. These options are not available in JDK 9. Uh, they have been, you know, uh, you, you would see a warning that these are deprecated, but internally they are mapped to using minus X log option. So here in this example, we can see that from GC logs, we can see heap usage. Uh, uh, in this example, uh, there is a full GC, and uh, it is not able to collect any space, any, any, um, you know, um, it is not able to free up any space in old generation, which means that probably old generation is not big enough to hold data, or hold the live uh, uh, data set of our application. Um, GC logs also can show us if there are excessive GCs. In this case, there are back-to-back -back frequent full GCs, which um, you know impact the application performance uh, very badly. GC logs can show us if there are long GC pauses. In this case, there is a full GC which is taking 50 seconds of uh, time, and that's uh, pretty long. So we should uh, investigate and find out why these long GCs are occurring and how we can avoid full GCs in our application. So the next uh, uh, diagnostic data, which is the most important diagnostic data uh, to um, troubleshoot memory-related issues, is heap dumps. It can be collected using J command, J map, J console, uh, Java Mission Control, and also there is an option heap dump on out of memory error, which is you know pretty handy because uh, uh, you have this uh, uh, in place when you launch your Java applications, and if in case your application fails with out of memory error, you would have heap dump available with you to to uh, to troubleshoot later on. You know why uh, your application failed with out of memory error. So uh, this snapshot, I hope you can see clearly at the back. Uh, so this is J console showing that. Um, 
uh, there are ambines in this case uh, uh, hotspot diagnostic ambine and it has an operation dump heap using that operation um, we can collect heap dumps from uh, live running applications uh, so this uh, screenshot shows uh, Java Mission Control. Through Java Mission Control as well, it is possible to collect heap dump. Uh, again, there are two um, ambines, uh, hotspot diagnostic and diagnostic command, using their operations. In this case, uh, dump heap operation of hot, hotspot diagnostic ambine, uh, we can collect heap dumps. So as I mentioned, there is a JVM option, heap dump on out of memory error, which can be used to collect heap dumps um, in case there is a JVM fails with out of memory error. Um, so uh, here we can see that you know on the on the left hand side uh, from the GC logs, we can see that the application is failing with GC overhead. Uh, limit exceeded uh, out of memory error and after that the, it is it is um, um, creating the heap dump um, so um, there are scenarios where you know especially parallel collector uh, it can uh, continuously uh, put in its efforts to um, collect uh, you know, or reclaim some space in the in, in the Java heap, uh, even though the returns of that are very minimal. Um, so, in, in such cases, you know, we have to instruct uh, the garbage collector that don't uh, you know don't put in so many so much effort when the gains are um, uh, are not significant. You should exit, come out of it, and uh, you know let the application uh, uh, stop. Or uh, let the if, if there is a if there is a uh, you know application server hosted application let it restart on its own. Um, so in in such scenarios, it can actually delay the exit or restart of the application, and it delays the creation of heap dump as well. Um, so so this uh, delay can actually have uh, performance penalties for our application. Uh, so. For, for, for such scenarios, we can use two JVM options, GC time limit and GC heap free limit. So GC time limit sets an upper limit on the amount of time that GCs can spend um, in percent of total time. Uh, and GC heap free limit sets a lower limit on the amount of space that should be free after garbage collections. So the de default value of GC time limit is 98% and the default value of GC heap free limit is 2%, which means um, uh, if the garbage collections are able to meet these two conditions it can you know the garbage collections are allowed to take, uh, take up to 98 percent of the time and if there is at least two percent of the heap space free after collections the garbage collections will continue they they won't exit you know they'll be back to back frequent full gcs so we can tune these two uh, uh, options we can try to in, uh, decrease GC time limit and we can try to increase GC heap free limit so that we don't have this, uh, this issue of back-to-back -back frequent full GCs in cases where, the where we expect the application to, to exit uh, rather than lingering around there. Um, so an out of memory error is thrown after a full GC if the previous five consecutive GCs are not able to meet the, the values set by these uh, two JVM options. So the next diagnostic data is heap histogram. Uh, heap histograms give quick glimpse of objects in Java heap. So it, you don't have, we don't have to follow two steps, you know, collect heap dumps and then analyze them using some tool. So uh, these are uh, textual, uh, uh, you know, output where you can quickly see which objects or which kind of objects are growing in heap. Um, heap uh, this heap histograms can be collected using a print class histogram. Uh, J command, J map, and there is a new tool JHSDB added in JDK 9, which can be used to collect heap dumps from core files uh, or non-responsive processes as well. And we can use diagnostic commands in Java Mission Control to collect heap histograms. So let's see some examples. Here we can see uh, Java Mission Control. Uh, in that we can execute uh, GC dot class histogram uh, operation, uh, you know, diagnostic command on the uh, live process to collect heap histogram, and it shows the heap histogram at the uh, bottom pane of uh, 
of Java Mission Control. So once we have collected data, we have GC logs, we have heap dumps, we have histograms, which tools should we use to analyze that data to see you know, what, what kind of memory problem I'm encountering? Uh, GC log and GC logs analysis. So in the GC logs, what do we want to look for? We want to see if there are too many full GCs. If are those GCs um, um, having long pauses? Are those GCs occurring too frequently? We can do manual inspection of the GC logs, or there are automatic analysis tools available, which we can use to you know understand. Uh, uh, what, what's, what's happening, what's wrong with my memory configuration or uh, why these GCs are occurring too frequently or why they are taking too much time. So here, uh, this is a GC viewer tool. In this, we, if we look closely, there are uh, GC pause, you know, two space exhausted uh, events. There are two uh, collections which are full GCs and they took around uh, four seconds each, well, you know, uh, not each, they, they took, uh, in total they took around four seconds, which is, uh, you know, uh, a long pause for, uh, uh, for response in intensive, intensive uh, applications. So in such cases, um, uh, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a GC log of G1 collector and uh, mm, two space exhausted GC me GCs mean that there is not enough room available in the old regions to promote uh, uh, objects from the young regions. Uh, so in, su it's, in such scenarios, we have to make sure, uh, you know, our uh, old regions, old generation and uh, young generation are sized appropriately. There is enough room available in the old generation. And in G1, there are mixed collections, um, you know, the collections in which the, some of the old regions are collected along with young regions. So we have to make sure those mixed GCs are running effectively. Now, if we look closely, there is an option, um, uh, uh, you know, there is uh, at the bottom, uh, we can see that initiating occupancy fraction which is the value w that indicates at which fraction the concurrent marking cycle of G1 collector should start, which prepares the old generation regions um, uh, so that they, they can be included in mixed regions. You know, if, if the mixed collections are not, uh, not uh, having old generation regions as part of them, the old uh, data doesn't get collected. The, the objects that have been tenured, that have been moved to old generation, don't get collected. So here we can see that the, this uh, occupancy fraction is uh, set at, as uh, 87%. If we reduce this percentage, we would, um, you know, start the the concurrent marking cycle of G1 collector earlier, which would which would make sure that the old regions are ready for mixed collections and would leave enough room in the older generation for promotion of uh, promotions of objects uh, from young regions. Um, so. Next thing to look for is, uh, do we have explicit full GCs? Because explicit full GCs can uh, cause long pauses in our application. And uh, they are easy to spot in the GC logs. If you look for a system string in the GC log entries, um, that means that there are explicit full GCs being invoked. These explicit full GCs can be invoked using system.gc call um, if you are using RMI um, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 the RMI applications at certain intervals, which is uh, specified with these properties, uh, invoke explicit full GCs. Um, and if, if uh, we, need to, we need to make sure that uh, uh, the diagnostic tools we are using to collect di diagnostic data, they are not, uh, you know, um, uh, unknowingly, they are not invoking full GCs in our application. For example, if we have option print class histogram uh, in our application enabled, uh, and if we send sig break or sig quit signal to the application, it would invoke a full GC before collecting the uh, class histogram or the object histogram. Uh, so in, in such scenarios, we have to be aware uh, that, the, that we, our application doesn't have explicit full GCs getting invoked. Uh, there is an option, disable explicit GC, which can uh, you know, completely disable uh, the, the explicit uh, GC invocation for our applications. 
So once we have heap dumps collected, how do we analyze uh, heap dumps? Um, there are you know, plenty of tools available um, for heap dump analysis. Uh, until JDK 8, we had JHAT Java Visual VM, which have been removed from JDK 9, but you know, uh, the open source project of Java Visual VM is still available. If you, if you wish to run your JDK 9 applications, you know, if you wish to analyze heap dumps uh, from your JDK 9 applications, you, can, you could still use um, Java Visual VM. And there is an excellent tool, Eclipse Mat, which is a community-developed open source tool. Uh, and it has you know, amazing features, which which lets you explore, dig deep into your heap dumps and see uh, what might be consuming memory in your uh, heaps. So here um, uh, I have a heap dump open in Eclipse Mat. In this case, we can see that the instances of byte array are uh, taking up to 406 megabytes. And we can, uh, in Eclipse Mat, we can uh, go and look at the inst instances of uh, th this uh, byte array. And here we can see a pattern that, uh, you know, byte array of length 1024 are uh, repeating. Uh, there, there are too many objects of uh, 1024 uh, uh, length byte array. Um, in Eclipse Mat, we can see the uh, reference chains uh, of these objects to their GC roots, which means the roots uh, in the JVM which are holding on to these objects and which are not letting them be collected by the garbage collector. So in this case, we can see that there is a vector long-lived object in uh, memory leak class, which is actually responsible for holding on to this, these uh, byte array instances. So perm permanent generation um, metaspace memory issues. So in this case as well, like we did in Java heap, uh, with Java heap memory related issues, in this case also we need to first confirm if there is a memory leak, monitor your permanent generation or metaspace usage over time. And if full GCs are not able to claim uh, any space from metaspace or perm gen, that could mean that your permanent generation or metaspace is not sized appropriately. Increase the size, test your application again, and if it still, you know, after the application reaches a steady state, if it still keeps growing uh, in size, uh, its, its uh, occupancy still keeps growing, that would indicate that probably there is a memory leak. To configure, it is native, but it, it is collected by the garbage collector. Um, so configure, uh, uh, to configure our permanent generation, uh, we can use two options, uh, permanent generation, uh, perm size and max perm size, uh, to set the initial and the maximum permanent generation size. Uh, a, a point to note here is that the uh, permanent generation has been removed in JDK 8, so we don't have permanent generation, JDK 8 onwards, there is meta space where we store uh, uh, class metadata information. So to configure metaspace, uh, uh, metaspace size and max metaspace size JVM options, um, if max metaspace size is not used, then the JVM is uh, you know, free to use all of the native uh, memory available to it. Uh, because metaspace, unlike perm permanent generation, is allocated from native memory. Um, all right, so we talked about out of memory error or memory leak situation with metaspace. So what, what is this, uh, you know, another space, compressed class space? So compressed class space is actually uh, part of metaspace, uh, which is a, you know, logical region. Uh, it's, it's not physically part of metaspace, it's a logical, um, it's a region which is logically included into the metaspace. Uh, and we have metaspace, uh, uh, you know, metaspace having compressed class space if the option use compressed class pointers is enabled, which is enabled if use compressed oops is enabled and which is true for 64-bit uh, platforms. So you, by default, you would have use compressed class pointers on on your 64-bit uh, JVMs. 
uh, and with this option on, this um, uh, the 64-bit class pointers are represented by 32-bit uh, offset. So there is, a, you know, separate uh, space, a separate memory pool, um, and uh, the class metadata in that memory pool can be referenced by 32-bit offsets instead of 64-bit pointers. Uh, by default, 1 GB of address space is reserved for the compressed class space when, you know, the JVM initializes, and th but this can be configured using option compressed class space size. Um, and an important point here is that the, the, the option max meta space size sets an upper limit on the, on the committed sizes of both these spaces, meta space and compressed class space. So uh, to understand this better, uh, if we don't have compressed class pointers enabled in the Java heap, we have you know uh, objects. In objects, we have these class pointers. So these class pointers on 64-bit platforms are 64-bit. 64-bit uh, uh, platforms are 64-bit pointers, and these 64-bit pointers are then uh, used to reference to class metadata in meta space. But when we have use compressed class pointers enabled, these uh, underscore class pointers in Java objects in the Java heap are actually 32-bit offsets. So it, it saves, uh, you know, uh, space uh, in our Java heaps if we have 32-bit pointers instead of 64-bit. Uh, so these 32-bit offsets can be used to reference to this class metadata in compressed class space. Uh, and uh, when we have used compressed class pointers on, uh, and if we look at the GC log entry, uh, we can see that there are you know, two lines, one for meta space and the another one is for compressed class space. Um, and uh, uh, note here that uh, you know, the committed size of meta space is 4864K, which includes the committed size of compressed class space. So 512K is not a, you know, a, a separate space. It is included in 4864K for meta space. Uh, diagnostic data collection and analysis for permanent generation and meta space. So uh, we should be collecting GC logs, and those can be collected with the verbose class or trace class loading, trace class unloading options. Uh, we can collect data. We should be collecting data with JMAP uh, dash permstat for uh, JDKs up to JDK7 and JMAP dash CL stat for JDK8 onwards. And uh, heap dumps help in uh, diagnosing uh, or investigating uh, permanent generation or meta space related issues as well. Um, and uh, JDK8 onwards, class statistics information can be collected with J command uh, GC dot class underscore stats command. Uh, so, um, um, you know, while investigating uh, classes or class loader related memory problems, we should we, we need to make sure that the classes are getting unloaded. Make sure we you know there the option minus x no class GC is not in use. If it is there, your classes will not get unloaded. Um, you know, uh, the JVM uh, would keep loading classes, and uh, none of the classes get unloaded. Uh, you will bloat the the meta space or permanent generation uh, usage. And ensure that CMS class unloading enabled option uh, is on when using CMS on Java 6 or Java 7 to ensure that uh, classes are getting unloaded uh, during concurrent marking cycles. Otherwise, they get unloaded only at full GCs. So here, uh, uh, this is the uh, logs uh, collected with minus verbose class. And these logs are important to tell us uh, you know, if the classes are getting loaded from correct package or jar files, and if they are getting unloaded when uh, we expect them to. Uh, so in this uh, uh, specific GC logs entry, we can see that there is a full GC, and uh, it is uh, happening because Metaspace has reached its uh, high water mark. Um, and here we can see that you know there is enough room available in Metaspace. Uh, Metaspace. Uh, 
capacity is at 6 GB, but its usage is only at 4 GB, and it is still, uh, you know, throwing out of memory error. If you look closely, the out of memory error uh, being thrown is for compressed class space, uh, not for meta space. So that that uh, you know separate region we um, talked about in previous slides. The, the compressed class space, which is part of meta space, doesn't have enough room to load more classes. So we should be using uh, uh, you know compressed class space size option to configure the uh, uh, size for compressed class space. Um, we can uh, uh, see class loader statistics collected with the uh, PermStat uh, with JDKs, uh, you know, um, up to JDK 7, which have a permanent generation. Um, and uh, JDK 8 onwards, we can use uh, jmap-cl stats uh, uh, option to collect uh, class loader st statistics. So class loader statistics is uh, uh, important that because it, it gives us information about uh, the class loader instances available and the classes loaded by them, whether the, these classes, class loaders are alive or dead in memory or uh, you know the the number of classes loaded by them or the bytes occupied by those classes in meta space or um, uh, permanent generation so heap dumps help in this case as well uh, we should be looking for classes that should have been unloaded and eclipse mat uh, has a very nice feature called duplicate classes which can show us the duplicate classes which have been loaded you know by multiple um, uh, instances of class loaders. Here, uh, in this case, uh, you know, this example shows uh, duplicate classes, and here we can see that the JAXB generated classes, uh, uh, there are multiple instances of those classes which are loaded by different class loader instances. And in this case, uh, the issue was, uh, you know, we had uh, the, the customer who reported this issue, uh, they had different version of JAXB uh, libraries on their class path, and which was causing class linking errors. Uh, and that, that led to loading of multiple classes by different class loaders. Um, so, you know, uh, duplicate classes can uh, give us clues where we should be looking for why these classes are getting, uh, you know, loaded multiple number of times. So, out of memory error due to finalization. So, as we all know, finalization is a feature in uh, Java where uh, your class can have a finalized method and instruct JVM that, you know, don't collect my objects until. Uh, my finalized method has been executed. Uh, so uh, even if you uh, even if the objects of a, of a specific class which has a finalized method uh, are eligible for collection, they won't be collected until finalizer thread has the has the chance to uh, to execute finalized method on those instances. So uh, we have the single only thread, finalizer thread, which uh, you know, has the responsibility to, uh, to execute finalized method on objects which are pending finalization. Um, and if this uh, single thread is not able to keep up with the, with the load that has been added to its queue, um, you know, if it lags behind, then we will have you know, a list of objects which are otherwise garbage, and if if they were collected, we would have room available in Java heap or you know corresponding room in native memory. Uh, but they are still there because their finalized method needs to be executed. Uh, so this this could waste a lot of memory. Um, and uh, good news is that finalization has been deprecated in Java 9, and this is the CR. Um, uh, ID for that change which um, you know with which it has been deprecated in Java 9 and this bug report actually uh, talks about al alternative solutions which should be used rather than using finalization. So which diagnostic data and tools can help us? Uh, we can see objects pending finalization using jconsole, uh, using jmap-finalizer info, and we can see uh, you know, uh, information about finalize, uh, the objects pending finalization uh, using heap dumps as well. 
So here in JConsole, we can see that, uh, you know, pending finalization objects, uh, the count is zero here. But if this count is high, this means that the objects uh, which are pending finalization are wasting our Java heap memory. And if those objects are holding something in native memory, if they have allocated buffers in native memory, then those resources are also being held on um, because of uh, the objects pending finalization. Uh, we can see um, information about finalizers uh, in uh, uh, Eclipse Mat as well um, by analyzing heap dumps. Uh, so uh, code cache is full and compiler has been disabled. So there is a, a separate memory pool in the JVM which, uh, which stores the compiled code generated by JIT compilers. And uh, this memory pool uh, you know, has a defined uh, size, uh, specified size, uh, and that, that it can also get full. And when this memory pool becomes full, um, you would see this mes message that the code cache is full and compiler has been disabled. Though you won't see, it's just a warning, your application won't exit, um, you, you won't see any out of memory error. Uh, but there are disadvantages, you know, there are performance uh, uh, penalties when, when, you, when you see this uh, message uh, in your application run. Uh, so when, when code cache becomes full, an emergency code cache cleanup uh, is invoked, which actually discards almost half of the compiled code. And if that compiled code is required soon after, uh, you know, um, uh, soon it, it is discarded, then the compiler has to work again to compile those methods. So uh, you would have performance uh, uh, degradation because your, your compiled code is gone, um, though that Compile, those methods will run in interpreted mode now, and the compiler will take resources to recompile those methods. So we, we, we should make efforts to avoid this situation, and we should ensure that the code cache size is sufficient enough to hold our compiled code. Uh, there is an option, reserved code cache size, um, using which we can configure our code cache size. So out of uh, memory error for native memory. Um, so these two examples show that uh, JVM is running out of native memory. Um, so uh, when, we, when we see this uh, error message, this means that JVM is not uh, able to allocate from native memory, which is not managed by the JVM, N not directly managed by the JVM. Uh, so this process, our current process, or other processes on the system might be consuming native memory. And we can make more room for uh, you know, native memory by uh, reducing the Java heap size, or reducing the permanent generation or meta space size, reducing the number of active threads or their stack sizes. Um, or reducing by terminating some of the processes on our system which we don't need at that moment. Uh, and if the above doesn't help, we might be facing a native memory leak. For example, um, you know, JNI code might be, JNI or JVMTI code might be allocating native buffers and might not be deallocating them uh, as necessary. So uh, which diagnostic data can help us to troubleshoot native memory issues? Native memory leaks, uh, um, you know, Two kinds of native memory leaks, uh, it could be in the JVM or it could be uh, outside JVM. You know, some code outside JVM might be, uh, might be leaking uh, native memory. So for tracking native memory leaks in the JVM, we have a tool called Native Memory Tracker. We should uh, use this tool to, to understand the usage of uh, uh, native memory uh, by, by the JVM. Or we could use, uh, you know, for, for tracking native memory leaks outside JVM, we need to, you know, rely on platform native um, OS level tools. For example, PMAP to look at the process map to understand where, uh, you know, uh, which parts of the memory is consumed by, um, uh, you know, which allocations. And uh, results from uh, native memory leaks tools, uh, leak tools such as LibUmem, Valgrind, etc. And of course, uh, inspecting uh, different segments of the code file can also reveal information about uh, uh, where, what kind of na native memory allocations are causing uh, the, the observed native out-of-memory error. 
Um, we can use a native memory tool, tracker tool, as I said, to track uh, native memory allocations, uh, which are done uh, by the JVM. And it cannot track memory allocated outside the JVM or by native uh, libraries. So to use uh, NMT, we can uh, use option native memory tracking. Um, and uh, uh, we need to you know, launch our applications with this option on. And uh, this option can be used at two levels, summary and detail, depending upon the verbosity level of information uh, we would like to see. And then we can use J command to connect to the process and extract native memory inf usage information using vm.native underscore. Uh, memory command. Uh, this is how the output from uh, vm.native underscore memory uh, looks like. Uh, this shows um, you know, uh, the memory used internally by the JVM, by different components of the JVM, uh, by you know, Java heap, threads, compiler, GC. Uh, so th this gives us a clue uh, you know, which, which part of the uh, JVM is consuming more memory or is uh, you know, growing in usage of memory. And we can collect a baseline uh, uh, output using NMT, and that baseline can be compared against uh, uh, you know, uh, outputs collected at different stages of application run and see which parts are growing uh, in uh, memory usage. So for native memory leaks uh, outside JVM, uh, we need to use a native, uh, platform native memory uh, leak detection tools. Uh, for example, we can use DBX, LibuMem, Valgrind, Purify, and so on. Um, so to summarize, uh, causes of uh, memory-related problems could be you know, misconfiguration of memory pools, excessive use of finalizers, um, explicit GC invocations, or memory leaks. And we, the first step to understand or to troubleshoot memory-related problems is to size our memory pools appropriately. And the tools that we can, we can use to troubleshoot memory problems are um, heap dump on out-of-memory error and print class histogram options, jconsole, jcommand, jmap, gc logs, eclipse mat, NMT are native memory detection tools. Uh, so these are uh, some references. Uh, you can uh, you know, look at, uh, uh, refer to troubleshooting guides. Um, here I have provided links for JDK 9 and JDK 8 troubleshooting guides. Uh, I have a blog where I share my troubleshooting experiences um, you know, quite often. And uh, there is a free uh, ongoing online course uh, for troubleshooting memory issues in Java applications. The enrollments are still open until uh, October 11. So you could enroll into that course and you know, learn more about uh, uh, how to troubleshoot memory issues. Um, and there's an article on troubleshooting Java memory issues on InfoQ. The link is given here. Um, so that's all I had to share. Thank you. <laughs>